Good afternoon. The next, the first item of business is a statement by Fergus Ewing on progress in delivering a sustainable aquaculture sector. The Cabinet Secretary will take questions at the end of his statement, so there should be no interventions or interruptions. I call on Fergus Ewing, Cabinet Secretary, please. Thank you. Cabinet Sec Secretary, please. <laughs> Thank you, Presiding Officer. I'm pleased to set out to Parliament the progress which is being made to deliver a sustainable aquaculture sector in Scotland. Last year, the Environment and Climate Change and Land Reform Committee and the Rural Economy and Connectivity Committee made a contribution to the debate on the farm salmon sector. The committee has concluded that the status quo in relation to regulatory arrangements for the sector was not an option. The Scottish Government agreed with that conclusion and today's statement demonstrates our determination to deliver the necessary changes to strengthen those arrangements. Before I describe these changes, I want to make reference to wild salmonids and the potential impact on them from sea lice in and around fish farms. We are, of course, extremely concerned about the serious declines in wild Atlantic salmon populations right across the Northeast Atlantic. The reasons for this are multifactorial. We've identified 12 major groups of pressures which are impacting on wild salmon stocks. And we recognize that aquaculture is one such pressure. Sea lice, of course, are ubiquitous in the marine environment and have the potential to impact both wild and farmed fish. That's why we established the Salmon Interactions Working Group, which is making good progress in collating recommendations for a future approach to managing farms, farmed uh, uh, and wild fish interactions. That group is aided by a technical working group which is developing practical arrangements for improving regulation in this area. And its work is informed by regulatory regimes elsewhere, including Norway's. Discussions are ongoing to develop proposals and the group aims to issue these for public consultation this summer. I mention these developments simply to emphasize that we are serious about delivering a broad program of reform and that the changes I'm announcing today are only the first part of that program. Presiding officer, the Scottish Government has completed its review of our farmed fish sea lice policy. Two years have passed since changes to the, to the Scotland's farmed fish sea lice policy were last introduced or to put it into context, one fish farming cycle in the marine environment. As a result of this review, we will be making the following changes to the current policy. Firstly, we will be introducing new legislation in 2020 that will require all marine fish farms to report a weekly sea lice number to Scottish Government's Fish Health Inspectorate one week in arrears. The sector itself has already recognized that it must become more open and transparent and announced its own sea lice publication plans in the last year. However, we will be taking action to strengthen the statutory basis of our sea lice regime to ensure there's consistency of approach and to deliver confidence in the system. The introduction of legislation will remove any ambiguity with regards to reporting requirements and deliver more detailed information at both salmon and rainbow trout farms. Crucially, it will provide data to monitor specific farms and issues as they arise, as well as allow for further policy change if needed. To ensure openness and transparency, each and every sea lice report will be published. Secondly, we will reduce the current reporting and intervention thresholds from next reporting week from three and eight average adult female lice per fish to two and six respectively. These thresholds are an average of adult female lice per fish on the farm calculated by following established counting and recording protocols. This means that fish farms will now be expected to report to Scottish Government's Fish Health Inspectorate at much lower sea lice levels, allowing for earlier intervention and enforcement action. We will publish an updated enforcement information sheet to this effect, which will include a simplified enforcement process. Thirdly, I, today, I'm also committing in the medium term, unless there is compelling evidence to the contrary, to a further reduction of the sea lice reporting and intervention thresholds to two and four average adult female lice per fish. This further reduction will happen if confirmed by a review of the evidence 
12 months following the implementation of the new statutory reporting regime. I mentioned earlier that the changes being made to the intervention levels are being introduced following just one fish farming cycle in the marine environment. So it must be recognized that these timescales are actually very short in terms of the fish farming production cycle and we must ensure that farmers are able to adapt and make necessary investments. Finally, I'm announcing today that we will explore how to introduce third-party independent checks on fish farm sea lice counts to ensure the accuracy of the information provided to Scottish Government. Taken together, presiding officer, these new measures signal a major shift from self to statutory regulation. They also seek to move to an approach that supports prevention through robust and independent monitoring. This new sea lice management policy will not operate in isolation. All marine salmon producers will continue to follow the code of good practice for Scottish finfish aquaculture, which includes points of compliance on sea lice and national treatment standards. Adherence to this code alongside voluntary monitoring and early intervention by salmon producers, as well as investment in new technologies, has resulted in the lowest annual average reported sea lice levels in 2018 since records have been made available back in 2013. The changes I am announcing today will ensure that efforts to control and minimise the prevalence of sea lice will be maintained and indeed exceeded in future. The improvements to date have been supported by investment of £13 million of EU and Scottish Government funding through the EMFF, the European Maritime and Fisheries Fund, since 2016 in 48 aquaculture projects, unlocking over 25 million total sector expenditure in innovation and new technologies to address this issue. Hydrolyzer, thermalyzer and permaskirt technologies to tackle sea lice have all been supported in addition to cleaner fish hatchery projects. At the same time, the sector has also invested around 53 and a half million over the past three years on lice removing technologies. This review of the farm salmon sea lice policy has been progressed as a key strand of Scotland's 10 year farmed fish health framework. Work is also underway through that framework to ensure that we lead on information sharing, on support, and we promote innovation in fish health management and deliver on other sea lice actions, such as creating a sea lice modeling and farm connectivity action plan. A wider update, presiding officer, on progress on all these strands will be provided to Parliament in due course. This week, SEPA also published a new FinFish regulatory framework. That framework seeks to strengthen the protection of Scotland's marine environment, enabling the sustainable growth of aquaculture in the right places, and will be implemented through improvements to the existing car licensing process. SEPA are now using the best modelling available so that they are able to better predict and monitor environmental effects. In addition to the introduction and the enforcement of a tighter organic waste standard, this improved modelling will mean that risks to the local environment, environment will be better understood and can be better managed. This approach will allow the assessment of larger scale impacts, including interactions with other farms, to be carried out. Tougher regulation will ensure that farms are sited in the most appropriate areas. It also means that those sites which may have the potential to sustainably increase without threatening seabed environmental standards will be able to do so. Presenting officer, taken together, these measures demonstrate the progress being made to change our approach to regulating the aquaculture sector. They also show our intention to continue to work with industry and alongside our independent regulator to ensure that appropriate and proportionate action is being taken to allow the sector to grow sustainably whilst protecting our marine environment. Ensuring that growth in Scottish aquaculture is sustainable is key to its future success. In conclusion, we must continue to apply high health and welfare standards to ensure that Scotland can continue to produce a world-class and quality project uh, product that is one of the most eco-efficient and sustainable forms of healthy protein available to feed a growing global population.
Thank you very much. The Cabinet Secretary will now take questions on the issues raised in the statement. I intend to allow around 20 minutes. Can I ask those members who wish to ask a question to press their request to speak buttons down? I call Peter Chapman to be followed by Rhoda Grant. Mr Chapman, please. I thank you, Presiding Officer, and I, I thank the Cabinet Secretary for prior sight of his statement. Let me be quite clear. I welcome this statement. The Scottish Salmon reports from both the REC and the Eclair Committee showed that the status quo was unacceptable, and it is positive to hear of the progress that the Salmon Interactions Working Group and the Technical Working Group are making. It is important to recognise that if this industry is to grow, it must grow sustainably. So I welcome the announcement of new legislation that will require salmon farms to publish weekly lice numbers and the reduction in reporting and intervention thresholds as this follows on again from advice from the REC committee report. It is important that these figures are published, however. So can I ask the Cabinet Secretary to outline when these weekly lice number reports will actually be published? Now, I appreciate the Cabinet Secretary acknowledging his planned timescales for the introduction of this legislation is short. It is important fish farmers are able to forward plan and make the necessary preparation and upgrades to make this happen. However, I think it is correct and important that this comes into being early in 2020. So I'd ask the Cabinet Secretary to give us a, a clearer timescale when within 2020 th these new regulations will come in, into being. And finally, the appropriate technologies are essential to carry out lice checks, especially if these are to be done on a weekly basis. Can the Cabinet Secretary highlight what support will be made available to smaller fish farms that may not have the funds or infrastructure to achieve this timelessly? Cabinet Secretary. Well, I very much welcome the fact that Mr Chapman, speaking on behalf of the Scottish Conservatives, is taking this, this approach. That's, that is very much appreciated, and it reflects, I think, the cross-party support for sustainable aquaculture, uh, which we heard in the major debate that we had on the committee's reports. In response to this question, when will the legislation come into force? Um, Parliament will be aware that uncertainties remain surrounding Brexit and the potential for changes in the legislative timetable, and these are practical aspects which... Uh, a, the First Minister and the Minister for Parliamentary Business and the, indeed the Cabinet must take into account uh, and given these uncertainties it is not possible to be categoric at the current time. However, I expect the legislation will come into force in 2020 and I think it may be helpful to Mr Chapman to say that my officials are considering the specific reporting requirements of new legislation and I can confirm that draft legislation will be put to public consultation for full scrutiny, open, transparent, straightforward. That is what we require. Um, he raises a, que a question, a second question, I think, was about support for those, uh, those companies in the farm salmon sector that are smaller, that are uh, perhaps less financially resourced than the majors, which uh, are very robust and substantial companies by and large. Uh, we obviously will wish to see that all possible practical support is available to all those players that operate on that, that basis. Uh, but I do recognise that really across the board, there has been a tremendous desire, demonstration and action by all the companies that uh, are involved to ensure that they're taking necessary steps, including very substantial investment to address the problems uh, such as sea lice levels, amoebic gill disease, and other issues uh, in a robust and comprehensive fashion. And I was very pleased that the reports indicate that sea lice levels uh, last year reported by the sector are at the lowest level for six years. That does, I think, prove that substantial progress has been made, and I'm very pleased that Mr Chapman has welcomed that. Rhoda Grant, followed by Mark Ruskell. Can I also thank the Cabinet Secretary for prior sight of the statement? Aquaculture is extremely important for the economy of rural Scotland and therefore it's imperative that we get the regulation right in order to build an excellent reputation for our produce. And it's not just the economy, it's also important for our health as our diet often lacks enough oily fish. The Cabinet Secretary states that the Technical Working Group is developing practical arrangements for improving regulation. Both the industry and those expressing concerns cite the Norwegian system as providing the best regulatory regime. It's both more streamlined 
but crucially it also focuses on animal health and therefore can I ask the Cabinet Secretary why delay in implementing a system along the lines of Norway? Cabinet Secretary. Well, I, with, with, I do appreciate the, the support for the sector that Rhoda Grant has, has indicated. I would say that I don't think that it's a fair charge to say that we're delaying. Uh, changes must be made with regard to the cycle, uh, a cycle, a, a two-yearly cycle, and I made that clear in my opening statement. With regard to Norway, I'm often questioned as to why Norwegian fish farming industry works uh, in a different way. Uh, and Scottish Government's sea lice compliance policy does not operate in isolation. It acts as a backstop on occasions when things go wrong. Uh, the two systems are different. Uh, I think that in many ways the system is said by third parties to be very robust in Scotland. But there are areas where we need to improve. One of them is regulation of sea lice. Uh, and this is why I've taken the steps today to make the announcements that tighter standards shall be introduced. I'm pleased that the industry have worked closely with us in developing this policy. I'm pleased that industry, that stakeholders are working on the various groups of the fish uh, health framework and the various subcommittees, including in relation to wild salmon. I think working together in Scotland and in particular, listening very carefully to, to practical ways in which we can make progress is the key. But I think today does illustrate, presiding officer, that we are taking steps to uh, tighten the regulation with regard to sea lice. And I'm very pleased that industry has welcomed the approach that we are taking. Uh, before I call Mark Ruskell, I have 10 members and I've got 13 minutes. So I ask you to be neat with your questions, please, to let members get in. Mark Ruskell, followed by Tavish Scott. Can I thank the Cabinet Secretary for prior sight of the statement? Uh, he will be aware, though, that there is still a serious concern with large fish farms being granted consent by being broken up into two or more applications when, in fact, they're operating as a single farm, which means that cumulative environmental impacts are not fully considered. SEPA have said that the new modelling... No, I'd like your question, please, Mr Ruskell. Will the Cabinet Secretary commit to reviewing existing farms that were granted permission under multiple applications using the new modelling which SEPA have just announced to give an accurate picture of their impact? Cabinet Secretary. Um, well, I, I think the, the existing system does contain provision for monitoring, as we well know. And what we are doing today is indicating that tighter standards will apply in relation to sea lice. That's one of several aspects. I also covered in my statement, as Mr. Rusko heard, the measures that SEPA are uh, taking with regard to the uh, use of uh, treatments. I, I'm very pleased that the industry has invested very substantially in alternatives to treatments, uh, in thermalizers, uh, in a cleaner fish, in skirting, in other techniques. Uh, and the progress it's making is very substantial. So I, I, I don't think I can agree to Mr. Ruskell's request. Uh, I note that SEPA has suggested a different form of modelling there to bring that forward and put it into action. And we look forward to working very carefully with them to achieve the shared aim that I hope we all support of an increasingly sustainable aquaculture sector in Scotland. Davy Scott, followed by Julian Martin. Uh, can again, I thank the uh, Cabinet Secretary for his uh, statement. Uh, he will be aware that the Norwegian industry is trialling a mechanism to filter fish medicines out of the water used to treat uh, fish. Will he immediately ensure those trials are replicated in Scotland to the benefit of the marine environment uh, and to industry? And will he reject uh, any further consideration of a fish farm feed limit per farm, given its well-known damaging consequences to on fish quality, given again, as Norway has demonstrated? Cabinet Secretary. Um, well, I, I welcome Mr Scott's uh, support, as always, for the sector. He's a stalwart supporter of the agriculture sector, and his, it is extremely important in his constituency. Uh, we absolutely welcome the development of Benchmark's Clean Treat system, uh, which is being trialled in Norway. I'm delighted that there are already discussions with Scottish regulators regarding a Scottish trial. It is not up to me to decide whether that trial should go ahead. But I think it does make sense, as Mr. Mr. Scott has indicated, that we should be trialling new innovative products and techniques that can help to secure the objective that we all share of a sustainable sector. With regard to the feed limit, I am advised that SEPA is considering whether moving to using a feed limit or retaining a biomass limit to regulate fish farms. Over the next three months, SEPA will consult with all 
interested stakeholders on these options uh, and uh, I'm very pleased that they're going to engage very substantially with industry and I'm sure Mr Scott will ensure that the companies operating in his constituency will play a, a part in those discussions. Gillian Martin, followed by Edward Mountain. President Officer, salmon is one of our most important food exports. Can I ask the Cabinet Secretary how the industry has performed this year and what the industry is doing to improve its environmental sustainability credentials? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, well, the, the industry is, is, uh, is performing uh, well. Uh, it directly employs more than 2,000 people and contributes around £220 million in gross value added to the economy. The wider impacts across the supply chain are estimated at £620 million in GVA and 12,000 jobs. Um, uh, and also the jobs are, as I've said before in this chamber, very well remunerated. The average salary, uh, annual salary in the farming sector is around £34,000. And many of these jobs are on the edge, the periphery, where there frankly are no other alternative opportunities of this type. And that's extremely important. With regard to their spend, um, the company sector as a whole have contributed enormously to improving their operation and sustainability. Uh, MoWE has invested around 100 million in their Kalak and feed plant and 26.5 million in a new hatchery at Inchmore Glen Morriston, which I had the privilege of opening. Scottish Sea Farms have arrested, invested around 58 million in its new hatchery at Valcardine. Uh, Loch Stewart recently announced it will invest 1.2 million in new feed, uh, feed barges. The Scottish Salmon Company uh, have invested substantially, as have Cook Aquaculture, Gale Force, and others. This is an industry that is investing very heavily, and these investments are directly going to improve the sustainability of aquaculture. Edwin Mountain, followed by Gail Ross. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I refer members to my register of interest. I welcome the general thrust of these proposals, which I believe will help fish farms become better neighbours to those that share their environment. Cabinet Secretary, is there a plan to increase enforcement once these proposals are brought in? Because we know enforcement in this sector has been poor in the past, very poor. Cabinet Secretary, briefly, please. Um, well, well, obviously, enforcement plays a part. The higher standards, I think, are primarily intended to further drive forward improved practice. I should say that, you know, whilst we have tightened up from three to eight to two to two and six, uh, actually the actual performance uh, of uh, many of most of the companies is far, far higher. Well, Mr. Mountain shakes his head, but I'm afraid the, the facts that, that I have indicate that the actual levels of sea lice found are very, very much lower. The question of enforcement is important. Enforcement must be taken independently by those responsible for that, and that will continue. Uh, I'm not sure that I would accept the, the thesis that Mr. Mountain makes, but I would say that we take enforcement very seriously indeed, uh, and the steps I've announced today, that the process will have an independent audit aspect, I think will increase the transparency which everyone, I hope, supports. Gail Ross, followed by Claudia Beamish. Thank you, President Officer. Can the Cabinet Secretary outline why a phased approach is being taken with sea lice numbers and how have the chosen figures been arrived at? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, well, the, the phased approach is taken because we believe that's the correct approach to drive forward best practice whilst enabling companies to alter and improve their practice to enable that to be done in practical terms. Uh, and we have indicated the tightening up of the regulation today and I think that's something that uh, the companies regard as welcome in order to demonstrate the good work that has been done further to improve fish health in Scotland. Claudia Beamish, followed by Kenneth Gibson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I welcome the commitment today for compulsory public reporting of sea lice data on a farm-by-farm -farm basis and other measures. This reflects an amendment to the Aquaculture Bill I had six years ago, but was at that time rejected by the Scottish Government. Also on the welfare of farm fish, can the Cabinet Secretary reassure the Chamber that any plans for closed containment will be fully tested against animal welfare standards and that on the other end of the scale, that SEPA shift to encouraging applications for larger fish farms in deeper waters will not simply disperse the fish faeces and medicines more widely in the marine That's environment, all. pushing it out of sight and out of mind? That's on the edge of being too long, but never mind. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, yes, I can confirm that impacts on all forms of... Uh, the marine system, including 
uh, marine, uh, uh, marine life will be considered very carefully. Uh, and I can assure you that all, all aspects of uh, providing a sustainable aquaculture uh, industry in Scotland will be considered in relation to future applications. Kenneth Gibson, followed by Jamie Green. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Can the Cabinet Secretary confirm that any provisions being taken forward will not impact adversely on businesses working closely with the ag aquaculture industry, such as W and J Knox and Kilburnie, founded in 1778, which employs 130 local people cleaning and repairing nets and is at the forefront of developing technology to stop lice penetrating into fish tanks and dissuade seals in non-lethal ways from eating the fish? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, an excellent question from Mr Gibson. <laughs> I say so, presiding officer. Uh, and I think it does illustrate the point that actually the jobs are not all uh, on our coasts and our islands. Many of the jobs that are sustained now by this industry are inland, in our towns and cities, and throughout Scotland. It's an important Scottish industry. It is not solely confined to the periphery. And companies such as W and J Knox are vital to the excess success uh, of industry. Seal management is a priority, and uh, Mr. Mr. Gibson has eloquently pointed out the improved practices that the company and his constituency are contributing to achieve. Jamie Green, followed by Alistair Allen. Uh, Cabinet Secretary, you use the words tougher regulation will ensure that farms are sited in the most appropriate areas, but one of the recommendations by the committee was to address the issue of relocation of historically poorly sited farms. So can I ask uh, what special assistance will be given to fish farms that want to relocate but are facing regulatory or financial barriers to doing so? Cabinet Secretary. Well, the appropriate location of sites is, is a material factor taken into account in, in all uh, applications. Uh, and therefore, I think that approach is one which will be followed by the various parties involved. Uh, there are various parties involved, as Mr. Green knows, in the question of, uh, uh, of the operation of existing sites as well as uh, the appropriate siting of new sites. So these are very much matters that will be taken into uh, account. And if Mr Green has any particular concerns, then I'd be very happy to hear from him about them. Alistair Allen, followed by Maureen Ward. In light of his welcome announcements today, um, what steps does the Cabinet Secretary intend to take to promote closer working between SEPA, uh, Crown Estate Scotland and other agencies? Cabinet Secretary. <laughs> Well, I, I think it's uh, uh, my colleague Rosanna Cunningham has joined me and has pointed out that she has responsibility in respect to SEPA. I think we all, uh, and the Crown Estate, she, she adds, uh, <laughs> I think we, we all accept in the Scottish Government that uh, the duty of all public bodies, the Scottish Government agencies, regulators, is to work as a team, working together, achieving our different purposes in the case of regulators' statutory functions. Uh, and of course, as I'm sure is in uppermost in the minds of members, all regulators are bound by the terms of the Regulatory Reform Act 2014, in particular Section 4. Maureen Watt. Um, the key to success in this relatively new industry is innovation. A great example of this can be seen in the creation of the International Centre for Aquaculture Research and Development at the University of Aberdeen with its innovative farm to fork approach. What other investment in our learning institutions throughout Scotland is going on in this area? Cabinet Secretary. Well, very substantial investment is going, in, uh, going on in respect of research, as I outlined in my um, uh, initial uh, statement. Uh, and that, uh, that investment is seen uh, in uh, bodies such as SAIC, the Scottish Aquaculture Innovation Centre, uh, headed up by Heather Jones, that does excellent work and as well as the Scottish Government, I think, having invested around £13 million in research, that's levered in £25 million from industry. Uh, and recently, my colleague Rosanna Cunningham has uh, enabled the investment of £500,000 into research about how we improve uh, the general issue of interactions between um, wild salmon and uh, other multifactorial issues. So, we are investing heavily because this is extremely important to Scotland, both as an industry and clean environment. Both objectives go hand in hand. 